Thank you, Carol. You did a great job. That's a beautiful worship song, and thank you for sharing it with us. One of the things that God wants for us is God wants us to be whole. Complete. Uh, he wants us to have a spiritual blessing that incorporates all that we are. Spiritually, emotionally, physically. But I guess I want to start out and remind us that wholeness is not a something it's a someone because it is Jesus Christ uh, and, and His Holy Spirit that enables us to be whole. We are infused with the life of Jesus Christ through the presence of the Holy Spirit and that gives us the possibility of being whole. Wholeness is being holy, it's being heavenly, it's being healthy, it's being spiritual, it's being cheerful, it's being raised above this world and yet able to live in the middle of this world and all the good and bad that's in it. So the question I have for us today is, are we experiencing wholeness? Are we experiencing that? That's what God wants for us. But are we experiencing it? If a picture is worth a thousand words, then the answer to our question this morning is that we are going to look at one, I believe, who not only experienced God's wholeness, but was able to give it a beautiful, beautiful expression in Scripture. We're going to glean from the psalmist, and it may have been David, who wrote Psalm 103. And I think in Psalm 103, he lets us know what wholeness means and ways it can be more fully experienced. You see, because having something and not being able to use it or experiencing it is two different things. For me, all I have to do is turn to Psalm 103 and read these first five verses. And regardless of what's going on in my life, I start to experience God's wholeness. So turn with me, if you would, to Psalm 103 and let's read these five verses. I'm reading in the NIV, but I didn't memorize it in the NIV, so I'm going to probably skip around a little bit and do what I memorized. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of His benefits. Who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years and desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Lord. Amen. So, when we read this text, I think it's good for us to understand what life experience was going on in the psalmist's life when he wrote this psalm. He's been going through tough times. Maybe a serious illness that almost killed him. Or maybe he's gone through the severe illness of a, of a loved one or a friend. Maybe he's been accused of a crime. Maybe he's been taken to court and the outcome is in question. And he knows that it is God who needs to vindicate him. If this is the psalmist David, and most think it is, we know that... He has sinned against God by adultery with Bathsheba and basically having her husband Uriah murdered on the battlefront so that he could have her as his own. He has been openly accused of sin, this sin, by the prophet and not in private but in public. So everybody knows what David has done. And though he married Bathsheba, they had a child from their affair and 
that child became deathly ill and though he prayed and prayed that child still died so he's in a tough place have you ever been in a place before where you didn't want to worship didn't want to go to church just didn't think you could face it I have after I went through a very tough time at one of the churches that I pastored and we felt very very betrayed by that church my wife and I just couldn't get up the courage to go to church again for a while so church for us was sitting on the front porch reading the prayers of Soren Kierkegaard and another author that whose prayers are just tremendous a lot of times when I can't pray I go to his prayers and read them as my own so David's been like this something whatever has happened whatever it is and there are lots of things it could have been but whatever it is he has not felt like going to public worship and so he writes this psalm that is to be used in public worship it's a it's an outline for for public worship and so he goes before God and in and, and worship and uses this psalm and, and he says something twice. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. <laughs> and then he says it again. <laughs> bless the Lord, O my soul. <laughs> because he's sometimes we have to we have to push ourselves to be able to worship. <laughs> And that's what he's doing here. He's pushing himself. He's, he's trying to, to get over whatever it is that's going on. And so he knows he needs to be back in worship. And so he's telling his soul, Oh, my soul, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And he does it twice. He's trying to put his whole heart into praise. And he's trying to do that regardless of how he feels. Okay, I wish I had my little toy train with me, but I don't. I left it at home. So you'll just have to work with me, okay? We have an engine. We have a coal car. Trains don't have coal cars anymore. I know. And we have a caboose, okay? So the engine is fact. That's the Bible. The coal car is faith. And the caboose is feeling. All right, you got it? So let's uncouple this train and let's take the engine, which is fact, and take out the coal car and just couple the engine and the caboose together. Will the train run? It will? How far without fuel? <laughs> All right, let's, let's put the coal car back in. Let's, let's just take the engine off. And we got the coal car, we got the caboose. Will the train run? No. All right, let's put the train back together again. We got fact, and we got faith, and we got feeling. Now let's take the caboose that is feeling off. Will the train run? So you see, regardless of how we feel, if the Bible tells us what is true and we have the faith to believe it, then we can move on. And that's what David's doing. He's trying to move on even though he doesn't feel like it. Feelings can be deceptive. You know that, don't you? So even though he doesn't feel like it, he is pushing himself to worship the Lord. He has prepared this psalm to lead worship. He has gone to public worship. He has expressed his praise for God who provides our wholeness. But what does wholeness mean? To be healthy and whole means that we must have body, mind, soul in sync. And any time one of those is not in sync, it can affect the others. If you're physically sick, it can affect how you feel spiritually. If you're emotionally in trouble, then it can affect how you do uh, physically. All those things interact. Now, we've got a thing in this world today called holistic medicine, and it's a growing in popularity and acceptability. Uh, but it doesn't mean that our culture is able to transfer this holistic attitude into personal wholeness. Um, it's a lot about our own ability to try to balance uh, body and mind and spirit. 
and it is crucial that we take control of our lifestyles at times. But you see, even by doing that, that's not enough. I want you to take a look at our society and I want you to think, now we, we know everything about diet and exercise and all of that stuff. And yet in our society today, we are both obese and anorexic at the same time. I think that really talks about what our society is like. We're so messed up. Just a simple thing like eating. And, and, and not only are we just obese or just anorexic, we're both. So society is, is, doesn't have the answer for us uh, unless we provide something that is more conducive to healing and health than just change of lifestyle. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's part of what we need to do. But it is the, the loving grace provided to us by Jesus Christ that enables us to take body, mind, and spirit and put them together and be made whole. There's nothing wrong with therapy. There's nothing wrong with medicines and hospitals. There's nothing wrong with friends who help and take care of us. Those are all good. Now I want you to repeat after me. Not all sickness... Not all sickness is caused by sin. Not all sickness is caused by sin. Say it again. Not all sickness is caused by sin. Okay, we've said that, right? Now I'm going to give you the other side of it. Is there is some sickness that is caused by sin. Okay, you can stop repeating because otherwise you'll do this throughout the whole sermon and we'll be here over 2 o'clock. I appreciate you trying though. So some sickness is caused by sin. You see, when we have sin in our life, there's something wrong. And you see, when we have an area of spiritual sickness, it can affect our emotional health. It can affect our spiritual health. It can affect, it can affect our, uh, our physical health. You see, one part can, can affect all the other parts. So you see, one of the things that we may need to look at is, is there sin in my life that is causing my life to be off kilter in one or two or three or all of those areas that keeps us from being whole? Jesus offers us the medicine that goes beyond therapies and all of those kinds of things, and that is He offers us salvation, he offers us forgiveness and He offers us the Spirit to be able to live a life that's pleasing unto God. Wholeness means recognizing that our spirit needs to be at least as much of a critical part of who we are as anything else. And when we leave out the spirit, then no matter how good we're doing physically or emotionally, without that spiritual component, we're in trouble. There's a biblical illustration in Matthew 9, 1 to 8. I'm not going to read it because we all know it. It's the healing of the paralyzed man. You remember the story when these friends had, a, had another friend who was paralyzed and they wanted to take him to Jesus. They picked up his, his pallet or his stretcher and took him to Jesus, but he couldn't get in because the, the place was full and they went up on the roof and they took off part of the roof and lowered this man down in front of Jesus so that Jesus could deal with him and make him uh, able to walk again. But if you remember the story, Jesus doesn't make him walk again immediately. Because Jesus wants us to be whole. So the first thing Jesus does is take care of a spiritual condition. And says that, that he's been forgiven and his life has changed that way. And only then does he heal him physically. You see, because to heal him physically and not take care of that spiritual component of his life that wasn't well, uh, wasn't going to help him a lot. Oh, he would be walking, but you see, he would still be off kilter. I remember when I tore the meniscus in my knee uh, and I had surgery. It was great. The pain went away, but I kept walking around like this. 
you know, and everybody says, what's wrong with you? I said, well, I just had surgery. Oh, isn't that terrible? I said, no. I said, there's no pain. Well, then why are you limping? I said, well, it's not well yet. <laughs> so you see, you, you can be well in other ways, and one thing can cause you to be off kilter. Wholeness means that, that we are together with all of these things. And it is the Holy Spirit, I believe, that, that regulates all the others, physically, emotionally, and all of those things. And without that, without that synthesis, I think that, that we can really be messed up. Now, there are a lot of things that help us. I remember one time when I was depressed, I went, to, this is after I'd gotten out of seminary, went back to my seminary professor for pastoral care and counseling and told him I was depressed and he, he listened to me. He always scared me to death because he, he could listen to me for five minutes and he could say, Bruce, this is what's going on in your life. And I said, wait a minute, how did you get inside my head so quickly? <laughs> he said, Bruce, did you read that book by David Burns that I gave you while, we were, while you were in seminary? I said, yeah, I think I thumped. Go ahead. <laughs> I said, Dr. Rowe, you know how much reading you guys gave us. <laughs> he said, well, I want you to go back home and I want you to read through that book and then I want you to come back and we'll talk about it. Dr. Burns' premise is that uh, for a lot of us, the reason that we're depressed is we're thinking bad thoughts. We're thinking things we shouldn't be thinking, like things that, that have no basis. Like, for some reason, all of you all think I'm crazy. <laughs> Now, none of you have told me that. Some of you look at me that way sometimes, but none of you have told me that. I have no reason to really believe that. So that's a, that's a bad thought. And so what you do is you correct the thinking. And I said, well, nobody thinks I'm crazy. They're, they all like me. I'm, everything's okay. So you see, that, that destructive thought that can cause us to be depressed can be corrected. And I don't have to go to the doctor for medicine. <laughs> So that's good. And, 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 and something like that is very helpful. And yet to understand spiritually why I would even think y'all would think I was crazy to begin with. There's something else that needs to be dealt with there. So I would recommend Dr. Burns' book. I keep, I keep a copy of it, except I give them all away. And everybody says, well, I'll bring it back to you, Pastor. Listen, there's a whole box that's gone. And there, you know, and not y'all because they haven't ordered another box yet, but... Uh, Dr. Burns, though, didn't come up with this concept. Listen to what Paul says in Philippians 4.8. <clears throat> Paul says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Dr. Burns just read Paul. He didn't realize he did, but... He's telling us that, that, that what our mind dwells on makes a difference in our life. So, how do we experience wholeness? In Psalm 103, David praises the Lord for wholeness. This vast display of God's gifts of grace. In verse 3, the God who forgives all your sins, all your iniquities. Uh, in verse 3, the second part of it, the God who heals all your sicknesses, illnesses, and suffering. The God who redeems, who delivers us from the pit. And that's not only death, but all the kinds of things that we live in this life that can destroy who we are. The God who crowns you, treats you like a king. Or a queen. In my case, it's always a queen. Uh, who gives us the richness of all gifts. This loving kindness of God. This covenant love that no matter what we do, God still works with us. God still loves us. God still cares for us. Which is beyond our comprehension. He gives us mercy and compassion. This God who satisfies our desires. You know, we try to do a lot of things to satisfy our desires and don't do very well sometimes. But He satisfies our desires with good things like righteousness and compassion and love and justice. This God who constantly gives us renewal, making us ever youthful no matter how old we grow. And making our youth like the eagle who is strong-eyed and keen and strong even in old age. Can you imagine yourself, God, making you soar 
on all those currents of air like an eagle. They don't flap their wings. They just soar. I don't know about you, but that's a, that's a great picture of what, of what wholeness is all about. This God who gives us a re renewal. And then he says, remember all the things. When, you, when you're in a tough place, remember all the things that God has already done for you. Uh, and, and count your blessings, past, present, and future. When you feel as though you've got nothing for, to which to praise God for, uh, look at David's list. I go back to Psalm 103 a lot. And if you look at my Bible, there, is, there are thumb marks and brown edges around that page because I'm constantly going back to 103. God gives us healing, and, he, that, and it leads us to our wholeness. Spiritual, physical, emotional. Healing takes place in our life. What healing has taken place in your life this week? Think about that. I made a list. A good night's sleep. For one who doesn't always sleep well, a good night's sleep is always wholeness for me. A day of blue sky and sunshine that lets me get outside when I want to go sailing. A day of gray sky and rain when I have to mow the grass. <laughs> the unexpected voice of a loved one or a friend on the phone. The comfort of a psalm like 103. And when I'm trudging up here, going up 64 and 81 especially, and the radio happens to come on with an Almond Brothers song. <laughs> And it lifts my spirits so I can make it all the way up here. If you should see me doing my seat dancing, you'd understand. And then I get here and God gives me another blessing. I open up my freezer and I realize that there's a carton of haagen waiting for me. Uncontrollable laughter. My little granddaughter, I don't know what got into her the other day, but she couldn't stop laughing. And it wasn't little stuff. I mean, she was just laughing. And she wouldn't stop. And I just sat there and enjoyed it. That's a gift of God. And maybe it's unashamed tears. And maybe it's Tylenol. Sometimes it's my spouse when she tells me she loves me and I really know that she doesn't need to, but she does. And then my children, they bless me all the time. And then this grandchild is just knocking us out. Wholeness is not something that we have to find. But you see, with, with Christ in us, it turns all these little blessings into something that can help us to realize that no matter how tough life gets, God is watching over us and caring for us. Wholeness is something that is inside the presence of Jesus Christ through His Holy Spirit. All the healing power that He uses to make us whole in body, mind, and spirit. We tap that wholeness. It's not something we have to go out and, and grab for. It's, it's something that's there. It's something that's ready for us to use. He's, he's already given it to us. You don't have to go searching for it. It's inside. And He can use that power to make us whole. Listen to Paul when he says in Philippians 4, 4-7, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I think he had read Psalm 103. <laughs> he needs to rejoice, and so he makes himself rejoice. And he reminds himself twice, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Paul was experiencing that wholeness even in tough times. And this God whose spirit is able to take care of his emotions in his heart and the way he thinks in his head... He knows that God is making him whole, even though he may have been in prison at the time he wrote that. 
Oh, there are lots of paths to wholeness that people would give us today. And, and there's nothing wrong with them. Medicine is good. Psychiatry is good. Um, maybe we're having trouble emotionally and we go to, a, uh, go to someone to talk therapy. That's good. All of those things are good. And, 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 and extremely effective. But it's not enough to have physical, mental, and emotional healing or, or wellness unless we have that spiritual side also taken care of because it is the one that brings the synthesis to all of those things that makes us whole. Not just part of us is doing good, but wholeness. And that's what God wants for us. And the greatest instrument of healing that God ever used in this world need only be employed one time, and that is that Jesus Christ died on the cross so that we might be forgiven of our sins and all of the guilt, that we might receive the Holy Spirit and have the power to live lives pleasing unto God and to make us whole. That single act of healing was the cross of Jesus Christ. The greatest wounds, the most serious infirmity, the most tough malignancies, all of those things... Jesus took care of us. I want to finish with the story of Mary Verhees. Mary Verhees was a very brilliant young Indian surgeon. But she was crippled as a result of a car accident and she was only able to feel and move from her arms up, her arms and her head. She, though, believed that God could still use her, and she became interested in lepers. She said she realized that she could tr transform their wasted stumps into something like hands and feet. And so she went, underwent surgery herself to enable her to be able to sit up straight so that she could sit in a chair and still do surgery on these lepers. She had the surgery. They created a, a, a surgical room just for her that, that created something just for her needs so that she could sit in a certain place and still use her arms and her surgical skills to take care of these lepers. Now, I don't know about you, but if I had been a surgeon and had been in a car accident and had lost all my feeling from, from here down, I have a feeling that I would have been very depressed. I might have given up. But you see, wholeness has to do with not being completely physically healed like we would want to be. She wasn't. God did not restore her motion in the rest of her body, but gave her something in her mind, spiritually and emotionally, that enabled her to keep going and doing what God had intended her to do even though she didn't have the use of her legs. You see, sometimes spiritual healing is not all it's cracked up to be because we can be infirmed and still be more whole than people who are physically well. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. That's the scripture that led me to Christ. I wasn't worried about going to heaven. <laughs> Farther thing from my mind. <laughs> I guess at certain ages you don't worry about that. I guess you get a little older you do. But I wasn't. But I had to look forward to my life and wonder if my life would be worthwhile at all. You know, was I going to have to go through a life that was a wreck and a mess? And up to that point, my life hadn't been very good. And I thought, well, if I've got to live the rest of my life like so far, then I'm not going to be very happy. And then I read this text. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And that's what I wanted. And that abundant life, that's what wholeness is all about. What we need for wholeness is to receive all that Jesus has for us and let Him make that synthesis of physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual and put it into all one big whole package that is well and good. 
You see, no matter how difficult our journey in life is, if we'll stop and take time and go over Psalm 103 and thank God for the many ways that He has always been providing for us and making us whole in the past and know that God's wholeness is ready for us now and in the future. You see, God's promise for us is not just to make us okay. God's promise for human beings has always been that He wants us to be whole. Yes. Are you experiencing wholeness? Will you be whole? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful text from David that reminds us of what wholeness is about even in the midst of very tough times. Lord, we pray that we will hear your desire to make us whole and that we will open our lives to you so that that can happen. That we'll allow the Holy Spirit to bring wholeness into our life. Physical, emotional, mental, and most of all spiritually. Because it is that spiritual component that synthesizes all the rest that makes us whole. Lord, let us accept that gift from you. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Again, I ask the question, are you experiencing wholeness? You can. I think Psalm 103 helps us to understand how we can. The question is, have you let Jesus Christ come into your life and forgive you of your sin and get rid of that guilt that de debilitates us in so many ways? Unless we do that, life's going to be tough because that, that sin and guilt is going to destroy us somewhere along the line. Let Jesus Christ forgive you. And let that forgiveness be the beginning of your wholeness. Christian, let the Holy Spirit that's already in you empower you to be whole. Let that Spirit take over your life to the point that, that it takes your physical and mental and emotional life and takes it spiritually and, and, and makes you the, the whole person that God wants you to be. And, and I'm always cognizant of the fact that no matter what I preach on Sunday morning, there's somebody here who's hurting in some way that a sermon like this doesn't even touch. And I'm going to talk to you right now. Because you're hurting, you're going through something that none of us know about, you maybe have told nobody. God is here this morning and wants to take care of your need and make you whole as well. We all need to be whole, we need help. So maybe today you realize this is the place where God wants you to be a member. And you join us as we try to find out how to be whole like God wants us to be. We're going to sing a song of invitation and I want you to be able to grab somebody next to you and you can pray by yourself I know that but maybe somebody else would pray with you come forward I'll pray for you we'll let the whole church pray for you just don't leave without letting God take care of your need today to make you whole let's stand and sing we're going to sing hymn number 293 stand and sing